Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show where we try to make sense of Arizona real estate numbers and today we wake up to the disturbing news of uh, Russia's actions in Ukraine. It's really going to shake things up where we where it goes nobody knows especially in our financial markets. We'll take a quick look at a couple things uh, to watch, <clears throat> one of them being interest rates, but uh, very disturbing and prayers out there for the people of Ukraine. It's just awful, awful news. Today, we have 4,500 listings. It's not getting any better. But here's another thing about Arizona. If you don't live here, you probably didn't know we experienced, and that is this. That was yesterday in North Scottsdale. Remember a couple of weeks ago, Super Bowl weekend, we had the big golf tournament. It was 75, 80 degrees. That's where it was. <laughs> so this, this storm come blowing through here yesterday and it was cold and in fact it's only 30 35 today so we do get cold in arizona from time to time here's where our uh where it's kind of interesting today it's a seven day moving average the blue line is number of listings to come on the market the red line's homes under contract look at the red line it's now larger than the blue line and we're not going to see any relief in prices until that switches those have to invert we need the blue line higher than the red line. As long as this continues, we're going to be in short supply. It's going to be pricing pressure goes on and on. Right now, we moved um, not much, about 100 more homes than what came on the market. So, you know, it, it looks like a big move on the chart, but we're just still eternally stuck there. So um, we're going to talk about waiving appraisals today and why you shouldn't do that. Not appraisals, inspections, and why you shouldn't do that. And you can't waive appraisals. But uh, here's what's going on today before we get to that. The Dow plunges more than 800 points as Russia attacks Ukraine. The NASDAQ falls into bear market territory. And that was updated just two minutes ago. What I see here on mortgage rates is not updated yet. Uh, we're at 4.19. It went up. 0 0.07 yesterday and it's not updated so that is the number to watch see this is just showing february 23rd the reason i say that is the number to watch is um there's going to be a flight to safety now so people are pulling out of the stock market uh, they're gonna they've already parked their money they're gonna move it to bonds it could lower interest rates uh but then again we're gonna have lower interest rates but we're gonna have astronomically high fuel bills uh gas is now oil is now over 100 dollars a barrel this morning and it's climbing rapidly so that'll put pressure on buyers so all of this could really kind of muddy the waters in the real estate business out there um i know there's people that are really hoping that we have a collapse in the real estate market so they can get in but there's a lot of things that come along with a collapse like high unemployment so you may want to get in and you won't be able to so all we can do is watch there's not a lot you and I can do about this. We just kind of watch the numbers, see what happens. And you hear me say over and over again, the number to watch is inventory, number of available homes. As long as we're gobbling them up as fast as they're coming on, we're going to be stuck in the same situation. Now, because of that, people are waiving inspections. In order to be competitive, in order to get your contract accepted, people are saying, you know what, I won't even have it inspected. Um, and uh, in we won't even have an inspection period. Normally, the contract gives you 10 days to inspect the property. Now, along with that, <clears throat> uh, sometimes we write offers and shorten it to a five-day inspection. That can be kind of risky. I'll tell you why. In a five-day inspection, you get in and they think there might be some problems with the roof. Now, you got to find a roofer. Are you going to get your first inspector and the roof inspector up there in time in that five-day window? Probably not, but if you're looking at a home that's got a composition roof on it, and you can pretty much tell just from eyeballing it whether or not the roof is, is in decent shape, and uh, an inspector will get up there and take a look at it. Uh, where you run into problems are some of the older homes uh, that have tile roof, and they, they see that the underlayment might be in bad shape. Well, now you need a roofer to go up there, remove some tiles, take a look, and see how extensive the damage is, and that just doesn't happen in a, in a day or two. So when you shorten the inspect, inspection, that kind of stuff happens. Now, here's here's an article here from HomeGage, and it said, 
Another option is to include a home inspection addendum rather than just canceling the inspection. In your agreement, stipulated that you'll overlook issues found in a home inspection valued at less than a certain price, such as $1,000 or $500. Or you can agree that only certain deal breakers will be considered, such as unstable foundation, mold, harmful air quality. I think that's a great idea. Don't waive your inspection. Just say, look, I'm not going to nickel and dime you and have all these things, re request all these things be fixed. Um, I'm only going to ask you to fix things if it's over this threshold or if it's in this category. And I think that's palatable. I think sellers would say, no, oh, that seems fair. You know, I know my roof's good. I know I don't have mold and it uh, doesn't look like the foundation's cracking. So they'll, okay, we'll do that. Now, I had a guy once in, uh, he's out of California. And he ran a bunch of mini markets out here. And and uh, he got this house. And he, he wrote a contract on it by sending his brother over to look at it. And his brother decided that, yeah, you should buy this house. And we got the contract accepted. And uh, uh, we had him pre-qualified. Uh, we started running into problems with the, pre with the qualification anyway after we got the deal going. But here's what he said. He goes, we have the inspection. I'm not going to ask him to fix anything. I want this to be a real smooth and quick transaction. I thought, great. So we go forward with the inspection. And they come out, and the inspection said that the heater wasn't working. Now, inspectors are not allowed to go in and tweak things and change a fuse or flip a different switch or simply plug things in. He just made a note that the heater wasn't working. And then there were a whole bunch of other really tiny things. Now this guy changes his tune. He wants absolutely everything fixed. Everything. To where I, I practically had to write a War and Peace novel on this. And he just turned into a very um, demanding client. And the issue on the furnace was very tiny. It was indeed just a fuse. And it worked fine. But then he turned around and said, and this is what I want to caution you not to ever do. Don't ever use the inspection period to try and change the price. I'll give you an example outside of this one as well. He said, I want them to credit me <clears throat> uh, $20,000. And I said, based on what? And he goes, well, everything that's on that inspection, if I have to fix all that. And I said, yo, in my best day, when I add, if even if we assume that the furnace doesn't work, which it does work, they fix that. But let's say that it was still broken. It doesn't go anywhere near twenty thousand. You're just trying to shake them down for another twenty thousand. Now you're my client, so if you want me to write that up, I will. But I'm telling you, this is going to fall on deaf ears uh, because you're just trying to change the price. Now, if you can tell me, I want this amount of credit because I need to make these repairs, and we itemize it out with an estimate of what it's going to cost, that's fair. I have a fiduciary duty to my buyer, but I also have a fiduciary duty to the public. And lying and just saying that I need 20000 for the repairs is not a good fiduciary move for the public. So I was really torn on this one. I finally talked him out of it, uh, but then he couldn't get the financing and the deal crashed. Now, the other thing that I see a lot, and I caution you on this, when you're going to buy a house, when you're initially looking at the house and you're looking at the floor plan and you decide whether you like it or you don't like it, take a look at the air conditioning unit. If, if it's old, the inspection is going to say this may be at or near end of life if it's over nine years old. Now, it might hum along for a decade. It might be great. But you know then, that day, when you're writing the offer for that house, that that air conditioning unit is old. You know that. So take that into consideration on your offer price. Offer less than you think you would have offered because you know you're eventually going to have to replace the air conditioning. Don't wait till the inspection so that you get the language where it says air conditioning unit may be at or near end of life. <clears throat> and then you want a new air conditioner. Well, that's an upgrade. That's not a repair. It's not broken. You can't ask for a new... You can ask, trust me, you can ask for a new roof if you want, but the seller is not going to replace that AC just because some inspector said it's 10 years old because you knew it was 10 years old when you went and looked at the house. Don't use inspections as a way to get a lower price on the house. And don't waive inspections, because here's the problem with waiving inspections. You're going to move in, and you're going to find out that there's really just a ton of electrical issues. You're, you know, everything's popping. It's a, the, the outlets aren't grounded. I mean, it could just be a mess. The thing's behind the wall. You could find mold later. 
That happened to me on one of the homes that I sold. The lady got in there, opened up the kitchen cat. She was tearing, remodeling the kitchen. She tore the cabinets out, found all this mold upstairs. We had that, she had that home inspected. And the problem was the inspector that she hired, the access to the attic was too narrow. It was an older house. It was built in the, like the 30s, I think. You couldn't get up there. And so he couldn't get up into the attic and inspect anything. And she thought that the homeowner was hiding this mold issue. Now, he was six foot five. He couldn't get up there either. And so we ended up looking at the seller disclosure form, and he had disclosed just about everything. So the attorneys decided that he was so forthcoming in the, um, in the disclosure form that there's no way that, that he was hiding the mold. It was from a condensation pipe from the air conditioning that was just doing a slow leak over the years and mold developed. So if you're hiding something, uh, then you can be sued. But if you have an inspection and they find these things, you can ask for that to be repaired. Had a home in Scottsdale, had mold. So we did an estimate and uh, we asked for a credit at close of escrow. They agreed, we got the mold fixed. What if we hadn't had that home inspected? Well, they would have eventually moved in. That mold up in the attic would have grown and grown and grown and their two little girls would probably get sick. And so those are the horror stories that you hear by skipping your inspection. So go ahead and try and shorten it if you want to, but just know that you're probably not going to get everything done. And do your due diligence. Sometimes people ask for a pre-offer inspection before I write you an offer. Mind if I just do a quick inspection? That's not going to fly in this market. People are not going to want an inspector walking around in there, you know, if you don't have a contract. Sometimes homeowners have their own home inspected so they can show you when they list it, hey, here's the inspection. Now, that's a good time to go ahead and waive your inspection if you have a recent one. Some people, though, don't trust those because they think, well, he did that for the homeowner. Now, inspectors can't lie. So if he's got a detailed inspection that the homeowner already had done, by all means, feel safe waiving your inspection. Or you can hire just a major inspection because if he has a note on there about the roof, maybe you're going to take a closer look. But don't get yourself in a financial bind and really a lot of heartache. If you... If you're looking at a house and they want you to waive the inspection, in my opinion, don't buy it. Walk away. You'll find another one. So in this hectic market, that can cost you a ton of money. So I suggest not doing it. Uh, I may not be on tomorrow at 3 o'clock. I'm going to be leaving town today. And uh, so I probably won't be back until Monday. Until then, have a great weekend. Stay warm. Mm -hmm.